Huh? Where? Hi, today I'm gonna show you, a fantasy adventure film named, Pinocchio, released in 2022. Before watching, please have a seat, relax and enjoy. The film opens with Sebastian J. Cricket, narrating the story of the woodcarver, named Geppetto. He used to live peacefully with his son, named Carlo, during the outbreak of World War I, sharing stories, and working on Geppetto's creations together. One day, Geppetto is hired to build a crucifix at the church. They are forced to go home, when fascist planes fly over Italy, and drop bombs on nearby locations. Carlo runs back into the church, for a pine cone he dropped, one that, Geppetto said was perfect, because it had all its scales, and a bomb drops on the church, killing the boy in front of his father. Geppetto grieves Carlo's loss for many years, even after, he buried the pine cone in the earth, and it grew into a tree, over the boy's grave. In his drunken sorrows, one day Geppetto cuts the tree down, which Sebastian had been living in, and he brings, a large log of it to his house. He begins to carve a wooden boy, but leaves him unfinished, says that, he will finish it next day, and fall asleep. Geppetto passes out, and Sebastian is left to wander the house, since he stowed away in the log. At night, several eyeball spirits, enter the house, and form the body of the wood sprite. With her magic, she gives life to the puppet, which she names, Pinocchio. Sebastian protests this, but the wood sprite requests that, the cricket guide Pinocchio in his life, in exchange for a wish. He agrees, hoping to use the wish to gain fame and wealth. Geppetto wakes up in the morning, to find Pinocchio alive, and playing around the house. He is freaked out at first, upon seeing a talking wooden boy and a cricket, but Pinocchio expresses childlike excitement, at everything he finds in the house. Geppetto has to go to church, so he locks Pinocchio in the closet, and orders him to stay there, but Pinocchio also wanted to go to church with him, so he breaks the door of closet, and gets free. Sebastian tried to stop him, says, he should obey his father, but he did not listen him, and go to church. Pinocchio enters the church, and reveals himself to the congregation. Everyone is horrified, after watching a living puppet. When Pinocchio declares himself, to be a real boy, made of flesh and bone, his nose begins to grow. As once, Geppetto told his son Carlo that, if we tell a lie, our nose will get bigger. By the way, Geppetto is forced to take him home, while everyone jeers, and admonishes him for his creation. At home, Geppetto fixes Pinocchio's nose, and is later visited by, the Podesta and Priest, along with the Podesta's son Candlewick. They discuss, making Pinocchio a model citizen, to ensure, he is not a threat to society. The boy protests to Geppetto, when he wants the hot chocolate, that the others are drinking, and Geppetto obliges him. Pinocchio sits next to Candlewick, and mimics his movements, before sticking his feet in the fireplace. Although he thinks, it's fun, Geppetto scrambles to put the fire out, and dips the boy into a water bucket, his legs having singed off. The Podesta orders Geppetto, to send Pinocchio to school, and he agrees. When Geppetto goes to sleep, Sebastian tells Pinocchio about Carlo, and how, Geppetto continues to mourn him. As Pinocchio goes to help Geppetto work at the church, he is spotted by a white monkey, called Spazzatura, who belongs to a showrunner, called Count Volp, whose circus has seen little business in recent years. Spazzatura runs to Volp, and shows him Pinocchio, whom Volp believes, will become his newest star attraction. Pinocchio then heads to school, but is intercepted by Volp, who convinces the boy to join his circus, to become famous. Pinocchio signs a contract, by drawing a smiling sun and he joins Volp and Spazzatura. Pinocchio makes a good impression on Volp's audience, as a singing puppet with no strings. Geppetto finds out from the Podesta that, Pinocchio didn't go to school, and he finds the boy at the circus. Pinocchio begins lying more, and the other kids are amused by, how his nose grows. He argues with Volp over, where Pinocchio belongs, and they begin pulling on him, leading to Pinocchio flying into the street, where he is hit by a car, effectively killing him. Pinocchio wakes up in the afterlife, and finds a flock of black rabbits, gathered around, as they bring the deceased into this realm. They tell Pinocchio that, he needs to talk to Death Goddess, in order to sort out his dilemma. Pinocchio meets Death, who is the sister of the wood sprite. She is annoyed that, her sister gave life to Pinocchio, but she explains to him that, since he is not technically a real boy, he can continue to die, and come back to life over and over, after certain waiting periods. She also tells him that, he will eventually outlive everyone close to him. Pinocchio returns to life in front of, Geppetto, Volp, the Podesta, and others. The Podesta thinks, Pinocchio being immortal, 
can make him a useful soldier in the war, but Volpe insists, Pinocchio belongs to him, since he signed the contract, and claims that, Geppetto would owe him money. Geppetto takes him home, getting into an argument with Pinocchio, since he wants to join the war, and Geppetto calls him a burden. This makes him sad, since he thinks, Geppetto really means it, but Sebastian tries to convince him otherwise. Thinking, he can help his father financially, Pinocchio runs off to join the circus, trapping Sebastian under a cup, to prevent him from stopping him. Pinocchio returns to Volpe, and asks that, he send Pinocchio's earnings to Geppetto, to which, Volpe agrees, even though, he is clearly lying. Geppetto finds Sebastian, after he freed himself, but was knocked unconscious, and finds that, Pinocchio has fled. After Geppetto sits to feel sorry, Sebastian tears into him about, how Pinocchio gave him love, and Geppetto just made him feel bad. They resolve to go and find the boy themselves. They take a boat to an island, where he may be headed, but they are devoured by a sea monster. On the other hand, Pinocchio continues to be a hit for Volpe's show. Spazzatura uses marionettes, to speak to Pinocchio, saying that, Volpe isn't actually sending Geppetto his money, and that, he is using him, while also claiming, Spazzatura is his favorite. Pinocchio doesn't believe, Volpe would do that, and the Count overhears. Then he beats Spazzatura, for trying to turn Pinocchio against him, but the boy confronts Volpe, for his treatment of the monkey. Volpe shows Pinocchio his true colors, and says, he is the master of both him and Spazzatura, threatening both of them, if they try anything against him again. Later, Volpe puts on a show for Prime Minister, named Benito Mussolini, as he is said to like puppets. Pinocchio then, puts on a crude display, to mock Mussolini, in front of Volpe as payback. While the children in the audience are amused, but Mussolini is not, and he orders Pinocchio to be shot, and for the circus to be burned down. Then Pinocchio returns to the afterlife, and waits to be revived. Pinocchio reawakens, on his way to a fascist training camp, along with the Podesta and Candlewick. While there, Pinocchio befriends Candlewick, as he reveals his feelings towards his father, for how, he is trying to mold him into his image, and fight in an unnecessary war. They play a game of, capture the flag, using paintball guns, and have fun doing it, but when, they announce that, they reached a tie, Podesta orders Candlewick, to break the tie, and shoot Pinocchio with a real gun. The airplanes then begin flying overhead to attack. When the Podesta, continues to demand Candlewick to pick up the gun, he stands up to his father for the first time. The Podesta attempts to shoot Pinocchio himself, but Candlewick hits him with a paintball gun, and gets him caught in a net, trapping him, just as, he watches a bomb, drop down on him in the school. Pinocchio is thrown into the ocean, but is found by Volpe and Spazzatura. The Count ties Pinocchio to a cross, and prepares to burn him, for costing him his show, and humiliating Mussolini. Pinocchio pleads with Spazzatura, and the monkey finally turns on his master. He frees Pinocchio, and tackles Volpe off the cliff, where he lands on a rock, and Spazzatura falls into the ocean. Pinocchio jumps in after him, and they are swallowed by the same sea monster, that got Geppetto and Sebastian. Pinocchio reunites with Geppetto, and comes up with a way, to get them out of the monster. He begins to tell enough lies, to get his nose to grow big enough, to reach the monster's blowhole. As Pinocchio makes his way over, he falls with Geppetto, but the monster blows everyone out of the hole. The monster then, goes after Pinocchio, who has found a sea mine, and gets the monster to latch it onto its tooth. The monster then, starts charging toward, Geppetto, Sebastian, and Spazzatura, but Pinocchio activates the mine, and blows the monster to chunks. When Pinocchio gets to the afterlife, he begs death, to let him go back faster, to save Geppetto, but she warns him that, if he breaks the rules, he will become mortal, and not come back to life. Pinocchio shatters the hourglass, that sends him back, so he goes immediately, to save Geppetto from drowning. Everyone reaches the shore, but Pinocchio is dead for real. Then Geppetto weeps for his son, and the wood sprite appears from behind him. She tells Geppetto that, Pinocchio's sacrifice for him, made him a real boy, but he cannot come back. Sebastian then uses his wish, to bring Pinocchio back to life, and the wood sprite grants it for him. Pinocchio returns, and is happily embraced by all. Sebastian concludes his tale, by saying that, Pinocchio had many great memories with, Geppetto, Spazzatura, and himself. However, as Death God has told him, everyone Pinocchio loves, will have to go someday, and one by one, Geppetto, Sebastian, and Spazzatura, all pass on. After Pinocchio is left alone, 
he heads off for a new adventure. So, I'm done here. We'll be back soon. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share. Thank you.